Hello guys, we are back with our next lecture. In this lecture, let us go through the service oriented architecture. So basically this service oriented architecture will look really a bit interesting guys. Because the thing here is you will be requesting for something and you will be getting that from your service provider. So basically this is a service method in which you request and you get the response of the item which you want. So this is nothing but your service oriented. So basically based on your request the service will be provided. Got it? Yes. So it is a style of a software design where services are provided to the other components by application components through a communication protocol over the internet. So basically request and response is the concept here. Okay. So SOA is an architectural approach in which applications make use of a service available in the network so basically whatever services are available in the network by using them you are going to use them okay so in simple words the diagram will look in this way guys okay yes so you are going you will be having a service provider and you will be having a customer so the customer re will request for some items so this is the first step and the second step will be you'll be getting the response. So guys, one more thing. I think I did not write these numbers in many flowcharts. So it's always better to mention the numbers guys, because in examination, how can the evaluator identify guys like the exact flow? So here I draw on the service provider first. So he might be thinking first service provider will respond, but that's a wrong thing, right? So that is the reason why write in this way. So write one circle and service request, write two service response. So basically this is the first thing happens. This is the second thing happens. Got it? That's a simple representation you can say. Okay. Yes. So the architecture will look in this way guys. So basically firstly the customer will check in the repositories or in the directories uh, that whether his required thing is available or not. Okay. So once it is uh, available or once it is there, it will inform the service provider to publish it. So basically he will directly publishing and he will be directly requesting. So the request and response will be happening here, but the query part will be done here. Okay. Yes. So here the customer will request, sorry, will search for his requirement. And the service provider will publish his required things. So for this, you can draw the single arrow. So, but even the information will also be returned back. So that's the reason why I have, I have drawn double arrows, guys. Okay. Yes. So you got an idea, right? So the customer will use this repository to find whether what services are available. Whereas the service provider will publish what services he have in this repository. Okay. And once they got an idea, like he wants that service. So he will directly ask the service provider to want that service. So he will respond back with that service. Got it? Yes. So now let us go through some principles or standards you can say and advantages and disadvantages. Okay. Yes. So each and every SOA will have a particular contract guys. So it might be a monthly contract, yearly contract or any contract with respect to their application. So basically if they are building a VM virtual machine, so with some configuration, so those configuration will require that much amount of money per month per month. So that's a contract you can say. Okay. Similarly loosely coupled. So if you recall, Coupling is nothing but the relation between two things, right? Two clouds or two objects, you can say in simple words, okay? So assume that you are using Gmail, okay? Similarly, you are using YouTube, okay? So basically, these two should be loosely coupled, right? So assume that you sent a mail to your friend and that mail update you, are, you can see from in your YouTube also. So that doesn't seem really good, right? Yes. So these kind of things like intersharing should be really, really loose, guys. So loose is nothing but very less coupling should be there in simple words. Got it? Yes. Similarly, abstraction. So basically, whenever a user is using Gmail, there could be some thousands or lakhs or crores of lines of code which exactly executes those things. So basically, it will be of hundreds or thousands of lines, not crores or lakhs. Okay. Sorry for that. Okay. So basically, these code and the interactions like how the server is responding, if there is any error. So all these things should be hidden, guys. So that concept of hiding things is nothing but abstraction, right? Yes. Similarly, reusability. So basically, if a component in all the uh, Google websites are same, then they can reuse the same login page, right? So why to create multiple login pages individually for each of them? They can create one single database and in that only they can store all the login IDs. So in that way, they can increase the reusability. Okay. Similarly, an, uh, auto autonomy. So basically the services, the view, the architecture should be really clear. Similarly, discoverability. So basically, if you are using any kind of uh, applications, uh, so it should be open and it should be applicable, right? Yes. Similarly, composability. So it should reach your required business goals and everything. Okay. Yes. So you got some idea about the principles, right? So these are some rules and regulations you can say. So now let us go through the advantages. So the service is reusable, easy to maintain, platform independent, available, reliable, and scalable. I think all these terms we have discussed from first unit to this unit around five to 10 times. We discuss the same terminology guys. Okay. Yes. So you know, right? What they exactly mean. Okay. Similarly, the disadvantages will be the high overhead. So basically it will be a time taking process. 
okay because you are requesting he is responding and all those things similarly investment the money is needed guys because soa is not a simple or easy thing because they are giving you the power of asking at any moment of time so that's the reason why they are going to charge a bit more when compared to normal services okay similarly complex service management so basically if you have multiple services again you need to manage them also internally okay yes. so these are some advantages disadvantages of services and this is all about soa guys okay yes so i hope everyone got some basic idea right yes so in the next lecture let us go through the enterprise software in the next lecture guys okay yes so let us meet in the next lecture thank you thanks for watching